Hey everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 40, we're going to take a look at the Electro Harmonix 6550 EH and the Wilsonton R8 tube package that uses it. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. And if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. Now talking about subscribers, we are now 1.2 thousand plus strong. We crossed the thousand mark sometime last week and then quickly added another 200 for good measure. I would like to thank everyone for their constructive comments, support, and many kind remarks over the last 40 episodes. So, as you know, I'm always looking for affordable tubes, and this week I lost something, which forced me to go digging deep, and while I was doing that, I found a mostly full box of Electro Harmonix 6550 EHs. Now, the 6550 is basically a KT88 by another name. Yes, the original tube had some differences, though they were drop-in replacements. But today, they're basically the same tube. Anyways, a case is 25 tubes on top and 25 on the bottom, so 50 brand new tubes. Now, you might be wondering how I could misplace 50 6550s in a big box. Well, I've got a lot of tubes, and that's my story, and I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> what we have here is the nickel package of tubes for the Wilsonton R8. Now, obviously, you could, you could use these in another amp that needed the same tubes, and you can buy a quad of these separately if you want. Now, let's just take a quick look at them. So, like all KT88 types, they basically, they almost all look the same. I mean, going all the way back to my vintage uh, samples of 6550s, my GEs, uh, that are now, oh, how old are they now? They're now 55 plus years old, at least. They've got metal bases, but we're plastic under here, of course. Octal, obviously. We've got this, this big big shouldered glass tube that is easily recognized. You can see a KT88 from a mile away, can't you? And a chrome dome. So let's get up close. Now Electro Harmonix is the brand name that New Sensor came up with before they came up with all these fancy reissue names and bought up a whole bunch of brand names like Mullard, uh, Svetlana, Oh man, the list goes on. They've got they've got so many of them. It's just crazy. Anyways, this is their brand name before they got into that business. In fact, this these tubes um, they date from 2001, and they were made in Russia at the um, reflector plant in Saratov. So they're they're quite separate from the vintage Svetlana tube, which has a rectangular uh, ventilation opening. These all have these nice round holes. They have, let's get it up real close, they have a welded plate, which is always a sign of quality. And they've got some really good support. See the support rods coming all the way up? Now, can you see it? There's actually a third upper mica. That's another sign of, of a quality tube. And here, see that? Look at that. It looks like that shiny fin on the side of the plate. I th Can you see it there? I think that's to help uh, distribute the heat better. I don't think it's actually there for reinforcement, uh, but maybe. Anyways, maybe somebody else has a better idea as to what it's there for. And of course, with these tubes, let's see if the light's just right. If you look right through the holes, you can see all the grid wires. I don't know if you can see it, though. Neat, eh? Okay, so it's a well-made tube. What else is in the package while we're here? 
this is how actually the R8's laid out, I think. So we've got a, in this case, we've got an inexpensive um, Russian 6SN7 GTB equal. This is a photon, I believe. It's a good rock solid tube. I haven't had a single problem with it. The irony of, of this inexpensive tube is I was getting my, my high quality Sylvania 6SN7 GTBs, which is an extremely reliable tube and a great sounding audio tube. It didn't like that position. And um, so I swapped in this, this good solid Russian tube and I've been using them and selling them ever since. So the first stage on the Wilsonton is the 6SL7 and the package is actually named for these GEs. Look at that gorgeous nickel plate. Isn't that lovely? Now, I'm not sure what a nickel coating does. Maybe it just helps sell tubes. But most coatings on tubes actually have a, a, an electrical purpose. So, who knows? And it's probably not a pure nickel coating. It's probably a, a blending of different metals. I think that's called an, an amalgam, I think. Anyways, um, GE made um, the... 6SL7 GT in the short bottle, uh, a little later design, and before that they actually made the same model in a tall bottle. And the tall bottle model, the earlier version from the 1950s, is a totally unreliable tube. I I must have brought hundreds of them in in a big huge lot one one time, and if they weren't dead, they were testing low, weak. Uh, mismatched sections, right, because we have two tubes inside one envelope. Um, so I was really, I was, <laughs> I was not impressed, because 1950s vintage tubes are really my thing. I find so many of them sound fantastic. So that was a big disappointment. And then I got a whole bunch of the later version in, and they're totally reliable. They very much like the construction of the next tube we'll look at. This is another GE. This is the 6SN7 GTB. The GTA and the GTB look ex almost identical. You probably could even mix and match them if the testing numbers were the same. Other than heater warm-up specifications that change slightly from the GTA to the GTB, those two series are very much alike. Sometimes there are different models. Uh, in which case they would be different, but in the case of the GE, they're very much alike. It's just a rock-solid tube. This is in the phase inverter um, driver stage, the later stage of the preamp for the Wilsonton, and I use these quite a bit and recommend them quite a bit, and the nice part is not only are they reliable, good-sounding tubes, but they're affordable. Okay, so that's the tube set. But how did they sound? Well, surprisingly good for a budget set of tubes really good in my first test i actually went up to make sure i didn't leave an expensive preamp tube in by accident bass was good with nice tone and neutral mid-range is very good clean clear and crisp or the three c's as i like to note now if the kt88 type has a weakness it's the mid-range it tends to be a bit edgy and somewhat flat, at least compared to a tube like the vintage Svetlana Winged C EL34. In this case, it was nice for the type, which is saying a lot for a budget power tube. Treble was very good, the three Cs. Overall, the package was very low mi microphonic, had good detail and sound stage. I've been listening to a couple of sets over the week looking for a weakness. And I can't find one. Highly recommended if you're on a budget and want to try some quality KT88 types in your R8. Okay, let's clear the decks carefully and let's take a look at what's on the bench this week. A few weeks ago, I featured a prototype monoblock and the the first one proved to sound so good that I've, I'm going on to the next stage. Hang on, I'll grab it. Let's back up a bit. 
So these custom plates are gorgeous. They're 3 sixteenths aluminum plate and they take a lot of work. Now because I hope to have some kits based on the prototypes that I've been developing over the years. I've been working on speeding up production of the plates because it could be a while before I can afford a CNC. In fact, I probably could afford a CNC, at least a small one. There's a nice one made in, um, in the UK that's actually quite affordable. Um, it'd be a big investment in time, but my problem is I don't have anywhere to put it or operate it because those things are noisy. So anyways, um, so I made a, um, a master template with the first prototype plate and uh, it was off slightly so I used that up in the what became the first finished prototype amp and it wasn't off enough to you could even you could I couldn't even see the mistakes but now that next generation that I generated off of that first attempt has become the master and I was able to lay out and drill um, one of these plates in three hours now it takes another half an hour to put a custom buffed finish on it but that's not bad three and a half hours now that's a hard three and a half hours that's non-stop work so really it's a half a day right anyways I love the plates I think this is how we're going to go with the kits I think people will appreciate them I don't as far as I know nobody in the marketplace is producing kit amps with heavy plates like this um, and I just think that it's just a great thing to have something so rock solid to build on it, it makes for an amazing ground plane, and um, I think they look good. So there's no such thing as flexing on this plate. You push a tube into this thing, and it doesn't move. And, of course, you strap a big, heavy piece of iron on it, or a couple of pieces of iron on it, and they're in there solid, so there's no vibration. You got a good, you know, it adds quite a bit of dampening to the whole setup. The, you could, you know, tap away on the side of the case, and this thing is not going to vibrate. Anyways, I digress. So the top is all assembled. The sockets are in. This is, of course, the other channel. This is the right channel. The power transformer's in. The output transformer's in. The design worked so well the first time around. I made absolutely no changes to the layout. It was dead quiet. The transformers, as you can see, are turned. So we've got this side here is radiating out like this and it's shielded on this side but the shields are on this side of the power transformer so we're not that's a big thing with transformers folks is you've got to orient them for low noise because they can talk to each other electrically which is not good because <laughs> of course the sound all comes through this output transformer and especially in single-ended designs they can pick up noise and keep it forever we don't want that so over on the bottom here, let's back out a little bit more. There we go. We've, we've got essentially everything is laid out and ready for wiring. The uh, power supply board goes here, of course, on these standoffs. This actually gives you a chance to see how I like to lay out and design. So the Wappen Big uh, filter cap comes right through a big hole, which is important. You can't run a, a large uh, capacitors wires close to something or they might arc so there's lots of space around here and they're double insulated I like to use these Teflon coated wires and I think I'm going to use them in the kits as well uh, they're a little finicky because you have to finish the ends but they're gorgeous they can take a lot of heat and they're gorgeous <laughs> so anyways that's where we're at this week I hope to have this wired up and testing a stereo um, set so a pair of mono blocks and I'm going to make a little bias change on the um, on the preamp driver tube which is essentially a 6J5 and we'll look at we're actually going to look at a whole bunch of them that came in in a minute but I, I got the biasing wrong on this too it, it, the prototype sounded fabulous but I think it can sound even better <laughs> so that's the big problem with uh, designing and building your own your own gear is that essentially they're never finished but at some point when this goes to market if this ever makes it to market um, I've got to decide that it's it's as good as I can make it at the moment so there you go and this is going to be point-to-point -point wiring um, 
with just a PCB. I think I've got one hanging around here. Hang on a second. Let me grab one. There we go. These are the boards that Hugh and Hugh's friend helped me to, um, design this winter. They did a great job. Anyways, um, this has never been test fitted. So let's see how close we are. Oh, we're pretty good. So let me just show you a quick tip. If you're doing these standoffs, is you can just get your socket, wrong socket, hang on. You can tell I wasn't ready to test this, but you can just get a big deep socket, I love deep sockets, and just you just gently bend over your standoff. It doesn't matter how close the spec is on the template, these standoffs are tall enough that any little deviation and they're going to be off a bit. So just a little bit more. There we go. And it's a perfect fit. And that, that of course, brass bends and the little stainless uh, screws that go in there bends really quite easily. And uh, and I've never actually broken one. So touch wood. I'm sure, I'm sure you could do it if you forced it too hard. So there you go. Um, maybe next week we'll be talking about the, the sound of the finished um, pair of monoblocks. Okay, this week um, some nice tubes came in and it's going to be fun. I promise you it's going to be fun. So hang on, let me get this out of the road. Okay. Now everybody knows I love my organic yogurt tubs. And let's open... Have you ever seen tubes arrive in a, in a padded, soft envelope? I've never seen that before. Let's just get that out of the road. Not only that, but these are very, very expensive tubes. But look at, they, they're in an aluminum canister with some nice paper towel so that they don't get all scratched up. And look at this. Phillips E80CC in original box. Hang on. By the way, if you're opening any box, but particularly vintage box, because the, the cardboard gets brittle, and, and sometimes you got to tape up the little tip, but get a sharp knife underneath that edge, the back of it. <laughs> and uh, I make all kinds of mistakes, and I never have done that one. <laughs> Can you imagine you're trying not to cut off the top or break it off and you cut it right off cleanly? These little knives are so sharp. Okay, I haven't opened this up, so who knows? Maybe put a 12AU7 in the box. No. There you go. One of my favorite tubes of all time. The E80CC. This is the SQ or special quality version. And you can tell that it's the real McCoy because it's got just a little gap at the top and bottom of the plate here. Good reinforcing rod and let's see if we can get the Phillips manufacturing code. It's right there. I'm not going to read it for you. Um, I got a V. <laughs> I don't have my code book open. So I don't think these these weren't made in the Hurland plant. So it'll be interesting to see where they were made because I'm pretty sure most of my E80CCs were made in Holland. Anyways, so an unconventional way of shipping, but it worked as well. I haven't tested them yet. They just came in a couple of hours ago. Let's hope that they're, they're fine because uh, it would be a shame to lose tubes like that. They're great tubes. Okay, what else came in? A bunch of these Russian Svetlana 6S. 8S, or in Russian, 6C, 8C, right? Because their, their C is RS. And in fact, the C here in the logo is, of course, S for Svetlana in English, right? And I've shown these before, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but these are essentially a radar tube that's a development of the 6J5, which is a much-loved um, single triode, right? There's only one tube in this envelope. And of course, the 6J5 
is exactly one half of a 6SN7, right? That's why I'm into these tubes. And they're sexy. They got two top caps. One is for the high voltage for the plate, and one is for the signal in on the grid. Okay, so those are some, some nice looking Svetlanas. And wouldn't you know it, today was the day for this tube type. So here is CV6. Now, CV6 just stands for Civilian Tube 6. And this is the civilian version of the DET20, which is essentially the same tube as what we just looked at. Everybody jumped into radar in the Second World War like it was a lifesaver. And it was. It saved thousands of lives on the Allied side of the war effort. I don't believe that... Um, that Germany ever developed uh, full working radar, but maybe they did. Uh, in fact, I bet you they did, and I'm just ignorant of the facts. Um, but all of the allied countries jumped in like crazy. The development of radar was, I believe, almost exclusively done by the British, and then they shared it with everybody. In fact, I believe they shared it, um, you know, at a, a zero rate of remuneration remuneration I think anyways they didn't get any money for the for the rights <laughs> so that's all you get on these tubes you don't get a lot of information there's no nice little mother code so I don't know who made this tube yet and there's more yet now skip ahead if I'm boring you <laughs> now you've seen these before we're pretty sure that uh, these were made by the Marconi company and just rebranded for um, General Electric. And can you believe these all came in today? Can you imagine that? And um, and here is yet another version of that CV6. Now the bases are all kind of funky the way they're attached, so it's a little sloppy at the plant. But you know, base glue. Maybe even this is aftermarket re-gluing. Um, glue doesn't matter. If the, ba if the tube is solid, it's a, sure it's a cosmetic issue. But a little bit of, a little bit of funky gluing is ah, so what? It's really it's about the sound, right? And only some of these tubes. But this is the only tube that gives us a hint who the hell made this thing. We've got this symbol up here, which is really quite interesting. And I think we've got. Um, East Germany here on the top. So is it possible that that these are um, RFTs? I don't know yet. I'm still, I just, I mean, literally I just brought them back from the post office, so I'm going to have to start poking around. And of course I've got to test them, but now that I've got um, a working prototype, I can actually listen to all these various versions of this tube, and I've got many of them now, to see which ones I like the best. The Svetlana was the first up, and it sounded amazing. So I'm hoping the others are up to the up to the Svetlana's quality of sound. Anyways, okay. Now, if you've stayed to the very end, as usual, here's some discount codes you can use. And remember, I've got flat rate shipping of twenty dollars around the world, and. Free shipping if your order is $150 or more after discount. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim from Bells and More signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>